How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today is very special. I am not in Florida anymore. I am in Detroit and behind that garage door is my most daunting project ever. Now when I say my most daunting project ever, I don't mean uh, mine alone. This is actually the labor of love by Mr. David Tracy. You guys will know David from Jalopnik. He wrenches on these old Jeeps and this is his latest project. This is a 1948 Willys CJ2A. It has flat fenders, a camouflage paint job. It has that Go Devil four cylinder engine in it. And this has been gone up and down by David and his friends. Those of you that have followed David's build will know that this has been a long time coming. Uh, he's actually been working on this for quite some time and he's doing something quite magical with it, actually. Um, we're gonna go from Detroit, which is where we are right now. It's a suburb of Detroit to Moab, Utah. That is a distance of 2000 miles. And we're planning on doing that tomorrow. The only issue is that this car does not drive in its current form right now we are rebuilding the transmission. And the transmission is uh, quite simple, but it's, uh, it's in there and all the, uh, the shafts and, and all that, they're out of the car right now. You can see that it's, uh, it's pretty barren in there because when we put the transmission into second or third, it just wouldn't go into gear. It only has a first and reverse. Since we don't want to drive 2000 miles only in first gear, that needs to be done. Uh, another thing is, this engine, while it has been gone over, the head gasket replaced, uh, all the internals have been freshened up. We haven't really given it too much of a shakedown. This is uh, <laughs> uncharted territory. 2,000 miles is 2,000 miles. There, there could be a lot of stuff that goes wrong with it. But uh, for now, it's been, uh, it's been pretty good. I haven't seen this actually run. I just got here yesterday. What I'm gonna do is, today is gonna be a really long wrenching day. And it's gonna have me and uh, David and some other friends come and repair this transmission, uh, put on the transfer box, uh, we're gonna put on the drive shafts, we're gonna do some uh, other odds and ends, and we're gonna see if we can make this Jeep run. And then over the next week, we're gonna be driving it 2,000 miles to Moab. And I don't think, I, I'm, I'm not even sure if this is even possible. So without further ado, Let's get to work. So I like that the kitchen has not only a <laughs> an exploded inline six, but also a transfer case and a manual transmission. All right, so here is the main shaft. This is basically the thing that runs the entire transmission. Uh, these gold things, am I, am I correct in saying that these are the synchros? Yep. Okay, so these are the synchros. And uh, what our friend over here is doing is he is rebuilding the uh, synchro hub and that goes on top of this, and that basically is that, no, which is a synchro hub? Because I, I don't, that's a synchro hub. Yeah, and that goes, and this is basically the uh, the shifter mechanism, so that goes in between all the gears here, and it's actually quite simple. Uh, the only issue is that when you take off the, the synchro hub, all these uh, little needle bearings go flying, and you have to make sure that uh, you collect all of them, otherwise the car won't run.
Okay, so we are under the car, and uh, the transmission is right about to be finished. This big thing right in front of us is, uh, is a thing called a transfer case. Now it transfers all the power from the rear of the transmission into the front and rear wheels. And it is very, very old and very, very heavy. It's like, it's weirdly weighted all the way is on this side. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna have to use this Harbor Freight Jack to kind of muscle it into place. But before that, I'm just gonna clean this all up because it's all grotty and, uh, and dirty. And then we're gonna put the gasket on. Then this can go on and hopefully everything lines up to where the transmission can actually work as intended with all three forward gears and maybe even a reverse gear. So I want to bring some attention to uh, exactly how rusty this car is. Now I know it's a little tight down here, but uh, I'm going to pan the camera up so you can see this. Look at the, this is, this used to be sort of structural to the frame, I think, or, or maybe it's the body. I can't even tell at this point. Every, <laughs> Oh my god, alright, where are you? floor here. Yeah, okay, so David just kicked a hole into the floor, and uh, oh my god, that is, uh, that is good, that is, but isn't that supposed to happen? Nope. It's not supposed to happen? There's supposed to be a floor there. That's supposed to be a floor, okay, well there's no floor where that, uh, that is, and uh, it seems like there's no real structural rigidity anywhere here. Uh, everything is sort of rusted. So this is, uh, even though it is a Michigan car, this would not be what you'd consider a good example of a seven-year-old Michigan car. David said that this is marginal at best, but we will carry on like the soldiers we are. All right, now that we got the transfer case installed, we should be able to see if we can get second and third gear to work on this old Jeep. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Is that the one we're replacing? Yeah, this is the one we're replacing. I just can't even. Uh, we, gotta, we gotta get in the. Uh, yeah. Neutral? Yeah. Alright, which one do I have to go with this? I'm gonna go with this one. Go out. That is key. Should it be that hard to turn? For this? Yeah. We want it tight. I'll go ahead, do it. Cool. I got my toes crossed, man. I, got, I hope this thing works. <laughs> yeah, all right. Here comes the moment of truth. Ready? You wanna? Hold on. Put my foot on it. Do you want to lubricate it at all? I mean, see that? We only have three and four. We two got and three. Well, two and three. We got three. Yeah. Too. It's also just not quite meshed, I don't think, you know? It almost needs to be spinning a little bit. Down there? Yeah, we just need to key rotate it. I wonder if we're in neutral. Oh, you mean the nut? I can, I can spin the nut. Right, ready? Yep. Yep, there we go. Boom. Nice. Alright, let's go ahead and take that off. 
We got a loop. We got a lubricate though. Yeah, yeah. 100 percent Hey Dave, can you do that again? Alright, really not sure if that was three. Yeah, this one too, but again. Alright, yep. Okay, now okay. just hold it there. Oh yeah. That's yeah, that's good. Alright, take it off. We got all the gears! Yep. Got the gears! Oh! Oh yes! It's a little tight, but I think it'll be fine. I mean, it's, I think there's just the new synchros. So we have a new transmission in this Willys. Wow. 2,000 mile warranty. Sort of Courtesy new. of the, this guy right here. Yeah, yeah he's actually... <laughs> yeah. If, if this fails, breaks, yeah. roadside assistance, Brandon will fly and save us. So now that we got that taken care of, take a look at what Brandon did with the tailgate. Look at this. Oh, that is so awesome. So this is a, uh, it's a stencil and he basically just painted this with, uh, with white spray paint. And this is an original style decal uh, that you would have seen on a 40s Willys Jeep. This is, that is awesome. It's really, really cool. The new ones have this one too, like the Willys Wheeler editions. But uh, this gives it a little more panache, a little, little more uh, street cred looks awesome. So here's one of the coolest features about this uh, this Willys Jeep. This is the air cleaner and it doesn't have a paper filter like you would have in a regular car. It has something called an oil bath and uh, Brandon here is gonna maybe do an explanation about oh this is awesome. So this is the oil bath itself. Yeah. So what happens? In so the, the air the air comes in uh, comes in from the back side right? Yeah. Goes down um, into the oil and then the idea is, is it travels over the oil and you dust your dirt sticks to the oil And then you end up with the fresh air going into the engine. That is awesome And it seems to be working because there's like a lot of, we lot of a dust and crap uh, Yeah, we could add a little bit Wow That is so cool Why don't all cars have this? The only downside of this if you get water in it. Yeah, it's good if you get water in it it rusts out, right? Oh, okay. The water sinks to the bottom. Yeah. All right, so the body mounts on this Jeep are pretty much shot. Uh, the only thing keeping the body on the frame is just a bolt. It's just a bolt that's really, really rusty and some of them aren't even there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna craft body mounts. Now, we don't actually have body mounts uh, um, that are OEM or even aftermarket. So we're gonna make our own using this. This is a hockey puck, it's a standard issue hockey puck. It's made of like a polyurethane or rubber. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this hacksaw. Hopefully it's gonna work. And we're just gonna hack through this body mount uh, to make two halves. And then we're gonna stack those on top of each other and then put a bolt through. And then those are gonna be our brand new body mounts. Oh dude, this goes through like butter. This is awesome. Really? Yeah, I might, I might actually redo I might actually redo this with a cleaner cut. Wow, that. <laughs> nice. We're gonna snip the hockey puck uh, dust if we'd like. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll put that in a, in a stew later. Yeah. Wow, that is a really, really clean cut. <laughs> it stinks a lot, but it is a very, very clean cut. Take a look at that. I don't know if you can see that. That is awesome. So. Since I'm gonna have four of these stacked on top of one another, uh, I'm just gonna take another hockey puck. So we're gonna have basically four halves or two whole pucks. Uh, so I am doing the body mounts and it is comprised of these hockey pucks with holes drilled in them and cut in half. Now this body mount, this body, I don't know if you can see this, it's a little dark, but it is extremely rusty. And we have to stack five of these half hockey pucks in, uh, in this body and then put a bolt through it. And I don't think I can show that on camera just because it's uh, one, it's really, really tight. And two, it is very, very dark. So we're just gonna take this as a given and uh, move on from there. But uh, I'm gonna work on this and uh, you guys get to see the next part. Sit rep, we are doing all the finishing touches. We have uh, people vacuuming, we have uh, people checking the diff. And also I think David is underneath the car, finishing up the drive shaft. We still have some brakes to do. We have some uh, uh, brake bleeding. There's a problem with bias between the left and the right. But as you can see, there is still daylight outside. And that means we can take this thing 
out for a drive before nightfall. So fingers crossed again, but this looks really good. We are ahead of schedule. Alright, go ahead. It works. It works. It is running. So right now it is going to go out into the world uh, for a little bit of a shakedown run. Then we can see if everything we did today is uh, is up to snuff and up to the trip of 2,000 miles to Moab. Oh, yeah. That's that left hand thread. So, uh, a bit of calamity. The Jeep developed a leak in the radiator. We don't know where it's coming from, and it is Saturday night. It is uh, almost 8 p.m., and we need this thing to run by tomorrow morning. So, right now, we have everybody calling everybody, uh, trying to see if we can get a radiator or a fix or something that can get us on the road by tomorrow morning, because right now, it's not... Uh, it's gonna overheat if it goes into any sort of traffic. Uh, yeah, this is not good. Here's the offending article. Uh, you can see it's uh, it's seen better days, but it's leaking over there and also down there. And I think that if we try to fix this, like if we solder it or put some JB Weld on it, even if that will fix those two leaks, it might have an internal fault somewhere in this uh, 2,000 mile journey. So I think it's best to replace this. And uh, right now we have everybody sort of scrambling and, and uh, looking for any contacts they have to fix this this radiator. We're even looking at radiators that would just fit in this space that don't have, that aren't for willies obviously, but uh, just anything that fits within this space relatively. So we actually lost some footage. Uh, yeah, we got the car running. It still has a coolant leak and it's actually not as bad as we thought. And um, we did some shakedown runs, maybe uh, like uh, 500 feet in either direction. We're about to 
head out to Moab. This is gonna be the first real drive of this car. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> holy crap. Oh my God. This is really a farm implement. <laughs> this feels like a tractor, legitimately. This is 100% a tractor. <laughs> There's no suspension in this thing. See what it can do. Oh, that's second, second gear. gear! Yes! Wow. <laughs> how does it feel? I mean, pretty good. You know? I mean, you've been working on this thing for months. How, how does it feel to actually drive this? Honestly, it's a relief. Like, even if it, even if it doesn't work out, it's just been a marathon of just breaking rusty bolts and just like just living in Greece for months and in a cold garage. I, it's just a relief to finally. It's, it's, we've been studying for months and months, and now it's test day. I just want it over. So this is gonna be, dude. Like this is gonna be a hard drive. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, 1,800 miles. We've got about a week scheduled in, which is frankly. Pushing it. I have no words to describe this. It is it is bouncy. There seems to be no give in the suspension at all. But uh, the engine actually sounds very good. Yeah, I regret replacing the shocks. The original <laughs> shocks would be a lot. The ride would be a lot better. <laughs> oh Jesus! There's nothing to hold on to in this car. You can't lean against the door because I'll fall out. <laughs> no seatbelt. No door. If you take a, if I take a right turn too hard, <laughs> I'm going on the road. So do you just floor it? Oh, Ooh. there you go. That's a gear. Sometimes. Come on, let's go into third. Sometimes I grind first, going trying to get into second. Third gear is the finest gear in the land. You ready for this? Let's do it. And. Third Ooh, gear. Oh, yes, third gear. Yeah. Oh, third gear. <laughs> the best gear. In all of the land. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, this thing is freaking amazing. There's quite a bit of wind noise coming out. I can't see shit. I have no clue <laughs> what's behind me. It's fine. Oh. It's probably fine. How are, how are you not falling out of the car? Careful. <laughs> I would say grab onto something, but I don't know what you can There's nothing you can grab, grab onto. onto. There's literally nothing. Everything is covered with rust. The roof is held on by bungee cords. This little <laughs> bar is held onto the roll bar with a bungee cord. So that's squeaking. That's you just pressing the brake pedal. <laughs> yes, the brake is accompanied by a squeak. Actually, let's see if we can fix that. We got this. We can fix the brake pedal real quick right now. Just real quick. Just a few sprays. I'm, I'm a bit of a, uh, I'm Clint Eastwood with this. I'm just, pew pew. You're surgical? Surgical. That, perfect. Oh, there you go. Whoa. There you go. We'll just keep this on hand. When it starts squeaking, just hit us with the blaster. <laughs> so, how, how much horsepower does this car have? Originally 60. Okay. Uh, now, probably uh, three quarters of that, two thirds of that, maybe. I think it probably has all 60. I mean, you did a, you did a pretty extensive rebuild. Yeah. yeah, we didn't bore any of the cylinders out. We just honed them, and you know, who knows? It feels like a solid 60. It feels like it, it's it's not, I mean, it's slow, but it's not like. So, one of, one of the interesting things about this Jeep, especially the transmission, that's in gear. Okay. The amount of play when you're in gear, you know, when I let people drive this, they, they come to a halt thinking they're in neutral. Uh-huh. And they stall it because they're in first gear. They're still in the <laughs> The problem is if you get hit in this car, like, it's not No, like, no, no, you are, you are like you're the one instantly dead. I'll tell you what, the steering with these wide tires, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little tough. Well, I don't think we're going to do too much steering. Uh, and Dude, this All thing right. is going to be awesome rock crawling. Let's get it there. Let's get it there. Okay. Let's get it there. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, that is going to be an ordeal getting to Moab. Uh, I have no idea how that's even possible, but this guy is going to do it. And I'm going to go along with him. I'm going to be in that so uh yeah the next series of videos are going to be all about this uh getting this to moab getting this uh sort of running when and if 
it breaks down and uh, hopefully it's not gonna be too many breakdowns but we do have a lot of stuff back there the next video is gonna be showing you everything that it took to make this thing a reality everything that it took to uh, make this a running and driving car uh, that we have to take along with us to make sure that this doesn't break down uh, and doesn't leave us stranded so look forward to that but as always like comment subscribe share social do whatever it is uh, I'd like you to do but you need to stay tuned because next time that's 